Hello everybody, and welcome to Army Painter. This is Series 6. And we're going to go back to Song of Ice and Fire, and we're going to take on some new things here in the form of Night's Watch. Again, for Song of Ice and Fire, and that is, I've been just having a lot of fun working on these. So you can see, I believe, yep, we now have the Night Watch starter set, which is up and available right here. You can see a lot of fun things in there. Here's your NCUs. I believe that's Ghost over there. And some of your heroes. So we're working on one of the combat units here. And we'll see what comes up. So we're going to do all of these units. Sworn Brothers, the Ranger Trackers, the Ranger Hunters. So yeah, we're going to be working on as we get back to our first scene here these really nifty bowmen and I'll show you the one that I painted here so this is the one that you're looking at they're all essentially one piece figures and this is what I really wanted to see because this is what we're going to do in this episode it's the basing all right and we're basing obviously the figures and the movement tray so here's one of those figures you can see we took him off the base and then set him on some of our tree bark it's a little bit different about this one as opposed to previous episodes see his tree branches in here it's a little something different I didn't do the first time around I was saving that for these guys here let's get this whole tray up here where you can see it you can recognize some of the things we've used, like the, the sand, the gravel, the oxide paste, the pieces of tree bark. But again, this time we're adding little bits of dried foliage even here. We've got it actually stuck in to his base. We'll try and do all these different designs here. Now this will be the unit that we're going to paint, but I only had one of these units available to me to work on, but I have two of the Sworn Brothers. So what we'll do is we'll base up these guys in exactly the same way as the other ones because they're all the same army here. Talking about some of the materials. And this is, we'll start with this actually. Usually this ends up getting talked about at the end. I call this a jeweler's block. See all these cut marks in here and all these drill holes and glue marks and everything. Just imagine maybe that being your hands or your table. I have a few of these. They're maybe five, six dollars on Amazon. It's just a solid rubber block. And it's really good for when we're going to take this other item right here. It's a razor saw or a jeweler saw. And basically what we do is we cut off our figure right here from this base so that we can get in here and do some nifty tree branch work and some tree bark work this is another important element right here it's from Vallejo there's several types of this my go-to is red oxide mostly because it's the first thing I ever used it just happened to, it was the first thing I tried this has the broadest range of uses there's a sandy paste there's a black lava there's all kinds of stuff Got the wood glue here. I tend to like the wood glue, and actually type on has several types. A favorite of mine has become the fast drying. It's just as strong as this, just tends to dry a little bit faster. And hey, with basing, you can't beat that. Obviously, pin vise here, because we're going to need to drill holes in the feet of these guys. And we've got ourselves paper clip that is sized right to this drill bit. So basically, once you find these things that match, you get a bunch of these and a bunch of these. Because you really want those to match up. Also, speaking of drill bits, once we started using these, drill bits, the frequency of them breaking was... Basically, they don't break anymore, they just wear out at this point. So that's another key thing. All right there we've got a few of our wood carving tools with us. I've even got... The big old uh, exacto knife type thing that I can use. Those are mostly for cutting into this tree bark. 
Now you can get this stuff, heck, I find tree bark of all types and branches and twigs just laying on the ground. A uh, good friend of mine, actually one of one of our patrons here, Mr. Mike, he sends me some batches of this every so often. And it's just, you can see, look at this. Looks like slate. There's nothing more natural than nature. And I used to try and sculpt this stuff by hand. Then I realized, yeah, really better off using this material here. Tree branches. Here we go. All types of tree branches, all sizes. I think this was actually more of a vine or something that grew. And yeah, it had some nifty little... Let's see if we've got the rest of it here. We don't have the rest of it over there. But we've got... Again, yeah, some thinner branch, but look at, see, you've got more texture there. And then we've got actually even some kind of worn down. And then we've got, I don't know if we'll use these bigger ones like this. I use these on the Free Folk Giant. Look at, look at that great, uh, fantastic, gnarly texture on that. So I just, anytime I'm heading to the store, walking over there, I have a tendency to just grab some bark and some branches it's laying on the ground what else do we have here this is actually loose leaf tea I mean I have to go quite this far what you can see uh, nothing looks more like deadfall than that and it was free because this is leftover tea that Kathy didn't consume then rocks and gravel we have some different types. We are always going to have the, the really heavy. Then we're going to have medium. I think it's usually called coarse, medium, and fine. So this is your medium right here. And then fine is essentially sand. Like so, right here. We have our junky little brushes that we will use. You know, our old number eight rounds. You know, some, see some of these with all kinds of glue in them. Let's see. Ah, oh, here's that. This is actually almost looks like a tree root here, but I think this is more of a vine. Look at that. That is just fantastic. Again, it's nature. Just happened to find it. It was laying around there. So, yeah, you can see there's glue and oxide paste and all kinds of nasty stuff in this brush. When I'm done kind of using these for painting, well, you can see then they become a gluing brush. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut some of these guys off of the bases. We're going to go through the process of, once again, I'm going to make something like this. So we'll be back. We're going to start cutting some miniatures off of bases, some gluing some things down, putting some pins. It's going to be a lot of fun. So it's going to be a little bit different for most folks from the, they're usually, okay, so this, most folks, they just leave the figure on the base and they throw their rocks and gravel and whatever over the top of that. This is a little bit different, and this is something I've done since the early days, and we mentioned it before, and that is taking the figure off of the original base and then putting something else in between the figure and the base. With these units of 12, I think you'll see... I had to come up with a bit of a strategy here because these guys in the back, well, they're archers and they're going to be firing. You can see how this one is raised up a little bit. So he's firing over the head of the guy in front of him. But yet the guys down here tend to be a little bit lower to the ground. Here's one where he was running. So he kind of made it look like he was about to be jumping off of the base or whatever, you know, leaping off of a rocky outcropping. You can see there are actually a few fairly decent sized logs on here. Again, another one who's firing. We've got him raised up. I tried to move these guys around here to make sure that there's plenty of difference between... There's three poses, 12 guys, so you're having repeats, obviously. So by the positioning of them or by their height or lack thereof, you know, here we got the same pose, but one's got a little branch on their base. So 
to the eye looking from a distance they'll, they'll seem different even though they're exact same figure and what do we this one is one looks like five guys generally five maybe six that's how many that I actually chop off of their bases and we're gonna choose so I think we'll choose him right and I'm just gonna turn him around this way I'm gonna choose him so we'll turn him around that way and then I kinda go in sort of diagonals here so we're gonna do this one so he's different than this guy here and then we gotta pick some in the back which ones have we not done I don't think we've done one of these. So I'm going to spin this guy around. So we have one, two, three, four right away. And actually, I'm going to go with this guy too. So there's five. And then potentially you have one of the captains here. So we'll also cut him off. He's standing on this rock here. I think we can do something fun with that too. Right? So what I'm going to do is get my jeweler's blocks out here and I'm just always going to be referring to this as a razor saw probably so just be used to that now uh, this the, the word razor saw is kind of more accurate because it is gonna it'll slice through you real good so what I'm gonna do is take the captain figure here I'm gonna set him down now let's see if we can change our focus here so you can get to see that a bit better. There we go. We can even potentially zoom in on it a bit. That's better. So you see the block is taken all of the way. I can just really press down. It's nice and firm on that block. And I know there's a reflection from the saw, but here we go. We're just going to cut into this. And if you get some resistance on it, just pull back a little bit and start again. Because, and as you get towards the end of what you're cutting through, we're getting pretty close. I know this is going to be shaking the camera. So see, we pop through that one. And then we're going to go over here. And now, just gently work our way through this one. And you see how this is nice and, everything is nice and flat. And you notice I just moved that around to make sure my fingers were not going to be at the receiving end of this. Here we go. Blow that away. Now we've got some gunk here. A couple ways we can deal with that. And so we've got our sanding sticks that we used to get rid of the mold lines. We can do that here. And we're just going to do some of that. And even now, one of the advantages is I can get in here to some of the mold lines that I couldn't reach before. And now with that basically filed away, we can even use here one of our little tools if that's a little stubborn and get rid of that. Got our drill bit here. Let's move this where you can see that. There we go. And now what I can do, and I just try and move this around, make sure it's straight. But so instead of doing something like this, where it's up in the air with no support, see how it's supported here. Look at that drill through that got ourselves a hole there now I'm going to take this and make sure there's no big burrs on that I don't really see any clippers here now the safe way to do this is to actually hang on to that I sometimes entertain myself by doing that and having it fly all over the place. That's probably ill-advised depending on where you are living. So 
yeah, probably don't want to do stuff like that. And what the heck, I'm just going to throw some glue on here right now. Just a touch there. And now these, sometimes they can be a little bit more stubborn. Let's see if I still have my, ah, here we go. So this is not a clippers, it's just a little more like a pair of pliers. Now, so get my support here. Push that down. And I may shorten that depending on how tall my base is. But right now, we've got our guy. He's He's pinned and he's ready to go. So we'll set him off to the side and let's pick a few more so I've got my guys already turned around now I can see here this is the other thing I like uh, doing this we're gonna change your focus back here real quick bang like so and I just happen to see a mold line here so yeah a couple ways I can do it this is a more of a fine grit sandpaper there's also a heavy grit I'm going to go in here and get rid of that. And I'll probably be able to get at these a little bit better down here once we saw him. All right, so we're going to change your focus back like so. And it's time to start cutting stuff again. So, again, I apologize if the table shakes. I'll try and do this in a more gentle way, but that's just how it's going to be kind of gives you an indication of just how much pressure that I'm using here. See a couple more. See, his foot comes out and I'd spin him around, hands up here, all the pressure on the jeweler's block. So I don't have to worry about hand parts being sliced off. Holy smoke twice. Every day I see another person that's practically removed a body part. And just kind of go a little bit gentle there. He's off the base. I'll grab my little wood carving tool here and get rid of some of this. Now there's a little rock here that's on his foot. In this case, I'm just going to carve that away. Let's see what other kind of extra junk we've got here. So these little burrs that are created. So we'll get rid of some of those. Where's my sanding stick here? Okay. And we'll hit that. Get rid of some of that. And again, now I can have a little clearer path to get into here. There's a couple of mold lines that were sort of buried down in there. And guess what? What are we going to do? We're going to set him here. Get our pin vise and say, so I'm not going to drill here because not enough stuff. I am going to go into his heel over here. And you got to be careful, especially with the softer plastic figures, because all of a sudden, next thing you know, your drill bit's popping through the other side of his foot or doing whatever. So. Try not to get too crazy with that. And like we did before, here's a another pin. I know this is not the the most entertaining of thrilling episodes, but I don't know. I had so many people ask me about it. I figure and they don't a lot of people just don't realize that you can do this kind of stuff. So this is, where again, the pliers come in handy. Pop that in. Nice and solid. We'll drop him in place. There's another guy that's turned around. And we're going to do the same thing again. Get him out here for you to see. And now let's see with this one here. This, if I am not careful, that foot right there is just not real thick. And you end up having a, a foot that doesn't uh, have a lot of body left to it because you've cut so much of it away. So I'm 
trying to be as careful as I can. We're through one foot. Now this one's got a little rock on it, so it's going to take a little more time. And I use this for cutting metal figures off of those broccoli bases all the time. So we're almost there. And there we are. And then again, I'm going to come in here. And we have all kinds of different files handy. Again, for getting rid of these burrs. And let's see if there's any mold lines that I might be able to display. Oh, see, there's one. It was almost impossible to get to. A few swipes with the file, and that's the end of that. Going to make sure there's no burrs here. Now this one's a little bit trickier. Yeah, I think I'm going to go here. Yeah, got to make sure it's in the heel. Otherwise, again, it's going to be sticking through the top of his foot. And we don't want that. And I'm also just checking to make sure I'm at the correct angle here. And our dot of glue. Got my little pin. And you can do this too, but I much prefer doing something like this. So that one's in there now. And we've got another one that's turned around. There we go. So I think I may not cut all of these out. We'll see. I'm going to do a couple of these maybe and then get down to actually putting some materials on them. Here's the last one. There we go, almost there. This one's being a little more stubborn here. I think you can tell by the shaking of the camera. So there's that rock that he's standing on. Just doesn't want to die. Here we go. We're finally through. Yeah. I just didn't see that big old rock that's sitting over here. Which I am going to dispose of right there. And I'm going to get back to my tool here and get rid of some of this. Now this, I'm not putting hardly any pressure because you see me doing this with my finger. Well, you can see how not deadly this is because, well, there would be lots of red stuff right now if it was. And there is not any of the red stuff. So we're just. Now, if you're worried about it, you can just go like this and carve it that way too. See, so I can go here and just kind of take some of that away. So, if, again, I always advocate safety first because when you slice your fingers apart, you're not going to be doing a whole lot of hobbying then, so best to avoid that for starters. And I think we've got most of our mold lines there. Once again, it's time to drill a hole, and I'm going to go right in here. sure that's in the heel. I start to drill it and then I pick it up as okay that's level there. It's good there. And only go so far. And I've 
got my glue. And here's my pen. Get that in there. Good to go. Let's make sure there's no... See, there's a little bit of a burr right there. A couple of things I can do with that. I can just put it here. File away that. It's gone. And I, I think I'm going to just do one more here. Maybe not him, maybe this guy. Because I think these come off just a bit easier. This will give me just one more that I can do some stuff with here. And I was right. That yep, comes off nice and easy. So again, we got these rocks on his feet. I'm going to leave the other one there, but this one chop some of that away and again make sure this is reasonably flat here see if there's any mold lines I can't get to while I'm at it like this and drill one more hole in this we're gonna go in this foot here Yeah, make sure that that's straight from a couple of angles. And the reason we're doing this on the block is if I do this, say I can start, this starts to flex. If it's down on the jeweler's block, it's not going anywhere. And that's a gives us a decent amount of these guys that we can base now on individual pieces. Like so. And generally don't want these to be too incredibly long. All right. Well, we've got... We'll just take these two guys for right now. Going to move some of these tools out of the way. And we were talking about our tree bark, right? couple of different ways of dealing with it. You could just kind of snap it like this. And now let's see, I can take this knife, see how that's cutting itself apart like that. That is mm, a little more risky, I guess, if you want to call it that. So you could potentially then Maybe do something like this. So we'll get this knife out here. So said, just pressed it down onto here. Knife hits that. But that's a nice little cliff there. Look, we've even got a little bit of moss on it. And what we're going to do is take it, break it in half. And then we'll see. Okay. Do we like this guy standing out? Well, it's not really going to be all that even. So it's probably just not going to work for him. Maybe somebody with a narrower stance. That's a also a broad stance. So this is just too narrow for his feet also. So we'll save that for another one. We've got this. Mm, I'm going to break a little bit of that there. And then I'm going to try and make this more uneven. And let's see how... Yeah, that's not too shabby. So what we're going to have to do next, we have to level this off, right? Because this is all uneven. And this is just, it's a real gentle process here. So it's there's so little pressure on the knife, I just, I don't have to worry about slicing myself. But what I've got now, see how nice and flat that is? going to sit on there nice and flat. So let's move some of this junk off of here. We'll get some of our glue on there. I also want to use 
just a touch of wood glue. So we've got that over here. Let's see if we can find ourselves just a regular old nasty brush to use. Just a few little dots. One is sort of a fast holding element and the other one, like the wood glue, is kind of a longer hold. All right, let's put that off to the side. So we've got ourselves a nice little base right here. And we can take this boy. It's definitely wide enough. Now we have to decide. I like this. See how there's that little point jutting out there? I like this. And we're going to have him go right down in there. And look at that. Now we're also going to be covering this with some snow. So any gaps there, you can deal with them that way. But let's, here, let's just take some of our wood glue here. Put it there. Yeah, I know, I forgot to put super glue on there. No big deal. Because I can just move it across this way, get a little dot of glue there, dot of glue under there. Remember that gravel I was telling you about? So there's some pieces of gravel. Actually, I've never, do I even have my, so oh, I do have a tweezers here. What do you know? You usually don't use a tweezers, not quite that delicate with things, but what the heck. So I'm going to take that, drop one in there, maybe not that same size. And drop another one here, find one that's a little smaller. Drop that in there. So see what I'm doing? I'm just going for different sized rocks here. Let's try one more right there. And then let's throw down some sand here. And now we've got ourselves, he looked reasonably dramatic, you know, before, but take a look at that. That's just, it's got a little more life to it, a little more action. And we could even throw a tree branch or two in there. Let's see what we've got here for potentially some tree branch action. We've got this dried foliage here. Like so, what I'm going to do is rip off a few chunks of it, like this. And I'm going to get rid of the, the leafy bits for the most part. Let me snap that off. And then, see I've got myself a little... Looks like a broken branch on that base. We can throw a little bit of glue on that. The idea is maybe I can put some icicles hanging off of that. And I'll just drop a few rocks into there and then some of my sand and I'll just sort of anchor that just a bit. So now see how there's all these lines going from different directions. Again, he's a, maybe you just do it on, on your surgeons, banner bearers, captains, NCUs, or attachments, right? I guess that's, really should refer to him as an attachment. But where's my other guy here? So that's this guy. He goes in the back. Let's do something fun with him. All right. He's got a really, really, really wide stance, so we need something that's very wide here. So I'm going to snap this like so. And let's see what happens here. Let's see if I can... I'm going to go... We'll do it the safer route here. We'll just chop it this way. And now the thing is, once I start doing stuff like that, it starts to lose its natural appearance. 
This has a little more natural appearance. Mm, put that aside. I always have plenty more. Here we go. There's another piece. Now this one is really hard and dense. So as I go to carve into this, there's way, way more resistance in that. I'm going to try and find one that has a little less resistance to it. And there's all kinds of different size pieces. Actually, this might work just nice. So see that nifty stair-stepped stuff going on there? Yeah, I can make it look like he's almost stepping down that. So let's break away some of this and potentially we can use this. Break some of that away. And then first we make sure there's enough for him to stand on. And then we have to see how much it's going to overhang the base. And what else are we doing? We're going to carve some of this down so that it's flat again. Remember that. Now, we haven't really used the oxide paste yet because these bases are, they're, well, these pieces of bark, they're covering the entire base. So, not much need. This one, maybe we use a little oxide paste, whatever. But let's, I have the, ah, good, that's on camera for you. And get that rock out from underneath there. And now I have to determine just how do I want this to be. So yeah, that's going to work. All right. A couple things, I have to bend this a bit. And now I've got to get this glued down. The interesting thing about when you shave the other side of the base, you can essentially self-level it just a touch. Here, we're going to get some of this glue around here, like so. Now I'll stick this buddy on there. So again, not a huge need for oxide paste except potentially there, but I think we can fill that with glue. So let's do that. We don't want a big old gap like that. And what do we do? We can maybe take some rocks here, fill that in. You can even, let's find a, see we've got a piece of uh, tree bark here. I'll get this on the screen for you so you can see it. I just shoved in a piece of tree bark there to match that gap. always save pieces of tree bark all the time. But who knows, maybe we're just going to have a bunch of snow there. So there's a couple of rocks. I'm gonna throw some sand over that. There's another gap, but just throw some sand in there. Clear off a little space. And here's our guy again, and I can see where my hole is here. And I'm going to grab my pin vise. Just going to try and drill down into the plastic. Now, normally I wait a little bit for this. And I don't do this right away, but we don't have infinite amounts of time. And hopefully you've gotten all the way through to the base. We'll see. So we got some glue on him now. We stick him down. And now he's on his base. This one I'm going to leave sit for just a bit. But you see his foot now is doing pretty well. It's in full contact with the rest of the base. Again, any gaps, well, hey, we could just do snow for that. So I'm going to put him back there so I know he's in the back row. So we're going to do another one here that's in the front row. So we're going to dig this out of here. 
And this one's going in the other direction. Now, what if he's in the front row? What if we wanted to have him on a little bit of an angle? Like he's almost walking up something. See how that has a natural incline to it? Oh, boy, look, it's like a natural little cliff here. I wonder if we can preserve some of that. Let's see. So we're going to try and cut this here. So I kind of got a two for one out of this. Look at that. That's pretty nice. We've got a couple of different shapes here. Oh, and look, now I have two bases. And we like this shape. It's reasonably level already. Already. I'm going to break off a little bit of that. So let's see if we can, yeah, so I oriented it a different way. Yeah, so it's it's like he's marching this way. I think you can see that. I'm just going to put that down in there just to mark, mark it as a reminder of what we're trying to do. All right. And again, that's I was just the way it broke was great. It's it's super flat. Again, here's some of that wood glue. Throw some of this down. Get that brush out of the way. Get this glued in right there so as that and it dries a little bit we're now we're going to put him here we had bigger pieces of tree branch so we've got you know stuff like this we've got our small stuff let's see what we've got in our little magic magic thing of logs here see what we have so there's a knot right here snap that like so and I have to see do I want to maybe have it look like he is just about to like he's trying to almost step over a log right here that's possible I just, I don't know. I have to see. Now I can see here, I want to throw a little bit of glue down in here. And where's my other stick here? So I could even pop a little tree back here, but I don't want to do that on the front rank. We want to do it on the back rank. So that's the next one we'll do after this one here. So let's just... Make sure we get him on the base first. I'm going to go a little bit further up. All right. Where's my pin vise? Get this camera out of my way for a second. We're just going to get down through the base. Like so. Let's get some glue on these areas here. Get him down on his base. Like that. And now he is actually, he's stepping out. See, he's almost stepping out over the edge a little bit there. And I wanted to do that. I thought that would be kind of fun because he's, he's kind of advancing. Now I don't necessarily, yeah, I don't necessarily want to do the stick there. But what I'm going to do is throw in some glue here and we'll drop a couple of these rocks on it like so. Again it's just to match the rocks that are already on the feet of these things. All right. And we'll just throw a little bit of sand and such there. I can also throw some of my tea leaf mixture in there. Here, 
A little bit of the tea leaf mixture on that, so we'll just get him back in his front spot. So where's one of our back row guys here? And we'll do this one here. Let's just get our base out of here. Again, another one with a wide stance. And I've got one here that's pretty much set to go. We're just going to make sure it's level. Good enough. Get our glue on here. And where is he going to go? So if we put him back here. So this is one of those cases where I'm going to take this, so I have to bend that pin just a bit to make him stand the way I want him. So there he is. Now he's pretty much standing the way we want him. Let's glue him in place. Like that. And we can see we can even pop a little bit of a branch right next to him here if we wanted to. Like he's kind of walking through the woods. Or again, we can do that thing where it's down by his feet. And I'm going to go more maybe this way. Yeah, let's go that way with it. So let me get my brush here. So I can get some glue on this. I could also do this with oxide paste, but in this case, I'm just using my wood glue. I throw one touch of super glue there. And get that tree branch down here. You can even go with a second one sometimes, make it look like it's really got a lot of deadfall. Here, let's put this second one down here. So see, it looks like he's dealing with some forest clutter there. And again, I can always have a few rocks around. Helps to maybe hold that in place. Anchor it down there. And just get again get some sand and here let's get some more of our leaf cover on it. So again it just makes it look a little bit more like deadfall and all that is is just used up tea leaves. So we've got ourselves a few different types of bases. We're going to do a few more of these as we go along. I just wanted you to see kind of what that's like. All right, here we go. See, this is a little bit plain here. Not a lot going on. So what do we do? We're going to take some glue here. Get it down on this base. Just in a few spots. Remember my tea leaves again. Just going to throw some tea leaves on there. Just again, dried up tea leaves. And maybe a little touch of sand. And that just added a little more interesting texture to that section there. If we're having all these downed trees, it makes sense that you might want to have some of these little leaves on it. Right? So what we're going to do and the next segment is we're going to base maybe a couple more of these, but definitely start to do just the ones that are flat on the base. More like these guys. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with that. So we've done our basing on the folks that are going to be raised up on those pieces of 
tree bark here. We've gotten our little bits of forest type basing again for things that we can hang icicles off of. But now we've got the rest of the unit, which is about the other half of the unit. And what we want to do is something like this. We're going to recognize all the same elements, the rocks, tree branch, some of the tea leaves here, all the same stuff that we used on the other guys. But now I'm just going to go directly on the base. And you can see even this, you know, if you didn't want to do the tree bark stuff, you don't have it. It's just another step you don't want to do. Well, then you just do this. I think that's why I try and present these two different ways. Because I think folks might think, well, gee, i got to go get tree bark or I have to pin things. I don't want to have to do that. No, this is also for the folks that maybe just want to get a little bit more out of the figure without having to remove it from the base. And what I'm going to do is... Hold the tray here so you can see we have a collection of guys here that are interspersed throughout and they're just like him, right? And I do believe, I forget if it's the left or right where the where your character goes. I think it is that because I think you start removing them from over there. So pretty sure this is where your attachment goes. Could be wrong. Could be on the other side. But in any case... We're also, when it comes time to do the movement tray, we're going to get some pieces of our tree bark there, just like we did on the other Night's Watch unit. So what I'm going to do is set my tray off to the side over here. We're going to build our little tower of jeweler's blocks again so that we can get a figure sitting over there. Yeah, that's get our camera situated here, get the focus going right for that. And we'll even spin it this way a little bit so you can see some of the rocks and other material that we're going to throw on these bases. Okay. Get him off to the side. And we're going to grab another guy from our front row. Now you can see this cape is really covering a lot of things. With the the ranger trackers, oh, let me see another mold line here. So we'll grab our, here's another interesting way to get rid of mold lines inside of folds. So see I've got this little right here. So what that'll do is actually kind of keep going with the fold. Just got rid of that little mold line that I saw. Let's get him back out here again. We've got our glue. We have some of our some more beat up craft brushes. Now there's a couple of things we can do. Let's let's bring out our oxide paste. We haven't played with this yet. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is take some of that. And what that's gonna let me do is See how structural that is? See how it has its own... Unlike glue, which just kind of goes... Just kind of flattens out and spreads out. This does not do that. Now, we're going to want the glue over here because that's what's going to help get underneath this, right? But over here, where maybe I want things to have a little more dimension. And this is where you can get more out of your flat bases. See? Sorry, I'm going to try and move my light here a little bit so I can see it better. So I push that back. Just work this around his feet, but I'm leaving a little bit of texture, a little bit of height here. And yeah, you can see that now. But then I'm going to grab some glue here. And that's going to go on this part. And that's what's going to work its way underneath his cloak. I'm also going to throw a little bit of that right here. I'm not going to mix the two. They don't really like to mix, actually. They don't really like to mix at all. And what can we do? We can find our tweezers over here. We can do the same thing with our rocks. I'm going to throw a big rock there. Here, let's get to Get some smaller ones to choose from out here. There. 
That's better. Actually, usually I just do this with my hands and get all messy, but I'm kind of kind of liking this method. Ah, this is pretty fun. Let's see if I'm just going to take a big old rock, throw that here, find some smaller ones. So you can see the the theme here. You find a big one, and then you start to scatter some smaller ones around it. Here's some of that mid-range gravel. So it's a little bit smaller. Now I could put the sand in there, but I'm going to go with... Actually, I've got another one of these conveniently sitting right here. I'll take away some of that. I'll stick that right there, and now I've got my tea leaves here. Let's read the tea leaves and see what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this at the same time, right? So what it does is it, well, it's just like grinding tea leaves. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. And then I can take a little touch of sand, throw that over the top. And now we've got ourselves what looks like some nice forest ground cover, a little bit more than just plain sand and gravel. We've got more textures here. You've got a little bit of tree branch, the tea leaves, the rocks, the sand. And I could have actually let more of the oxide paste show through. I'm going to grab another guy here. And I think we're going to try something even a little bit different now. We've got see these pieces of tree bark here. I adjust my focus a touch. That's better. I can't really make a base out of this. It's too small for that. But what I can do is so I'm gonna take my knife and see how it lets me cut that so easy. Don't have to worry about slicing myself. I wonder if I were to do something like this. Now that's kind of nifty. Again, I didn't have to chop them off the base, but it's going to continue the same texture that we've got on the whole rest of that here. I'm gonna, yep, that's pretty flat on the bottom. Don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to just grab some, me some glue here. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Now the reason I'm using, a couple reasons I'm using that piece is that this is the exact same guy that we just based before and that's where we use the oxide paste and the, actually I can hold it up here I think. Yeah, we got the focus up here now. Sorry guys, I'm used to just kind of having the focus set to one plane because I'm painting or whatever. So these basing ones always have to remember that the focus is constantly changing. So here we've got our glue in place. I'm going to throw our gravel piece. I'm throw in a few rocks here. Here, let's get some of these smaller rocks. And then we'll just go with collection of tea leaves and other things around the edge. Why not? Got some sand here. Just drop that right in. Also have to keep in mind we're going to be putting snow over the top of these. So here, let's compare. It's the exact same figure, but two very different types of base. You know what? I'm actually going to move him towards the back. The same figure. I want him here. Take a look at what we just did because we're trying to match these two guys. So that makes a little more sense. So if we're doing that, guess what? We got one more of that guy. And he's off in the back. So what I'm going to do is see if I can't get some kind of a log, some kind of piece of wood working on that. And I've got this neat little bit of stick right here. Break that. And, okay, I'm going to have to break that here. So I just want that little bit, a piece of wood right there. 
means I'm going to go back to my oxide paste. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of some of this glue that I've got in the brush, grab my oxide paste again. And as I've mentioned before with the oxide paste, if you get it on your clothes, it's not really going to come out of there. It can stain your carpet, can stain your clothes, so if you've got clothes, carpet, whatever that you're really particular about, maybe you want to cover that. So just in case you happen to drop your brush or some other form of accident, that way you have a little bit of a shield between that oxide paste and your valuables. So what we're going to do is... I see, I like that one piece, but what about this piece here? Now we'll save that for another one. So we're just going to drop that here, and what happens is that the oxide paste sort of fills up around that. And I've even got next to him a figure with a little piece of tree branch on it, so here's another type of dried foliage that I've got. See, I like that as its own separate tree. Here I'm going to grab a chunk of this. Like so. I'm going to get rid of some of that foliage there. I'm just going to throw this in here. So see how that just changes it ever so slightly. Gives it a little different look. And what are we going to do? We're going to throw some rocks in here. So one over there, like before, then a smaller one. I'm going to throw some rocks in the back over here. But what I'm also going to do is see if I can't shave down one of these really small bits and throw that back here. So yeah, we're trying to spread that texture out as much as we can because we want it, it's not just for one base, it's supposed to be for all the bases. Right? We want the whole entire unit to have a similar type of texture because we're doing the movement tray and the unit. So again, we've got a little piece of wood here now. We've got that extra little tree branch. It sits down in there. Real nice. Good to go. We only have a few more of these. And there's another piece. Guess what? That'll go well, that's gonna work right there. I'll set that on that front part. Here, let's grab ourselves some glue. Try to fill in as much of this as possible. And this is where the wood glue really helps. It just has an extra extra bonding power. You could use super glue too. I when I get my little one dower for a package of four super glues or something like that, I'm I'll use that sometimes in addition to help glue down the logs and other things here. So we've got our piece of shale, whatever you want to call that there. Now do I want to put a log in? Nah, I won't put that in there. We'll save that. Well, let's see if I can't find any more. Ah, oh, see here's a nice nice chunk right here. Guess what? It's going to go on the back, so now it looks like he's almost standing on that. Even though he's not. So again, if you don't want to have to slice the figure off of a base and deal with those extra steps, you can still do the tree bark stuff and save that. I've said it many times before on the tutorials, I'm not trying to create a set of rules for you to deal with. I try to really avoid the whole you must do this or else kind of thing. I try more just to present options. So how hard was that? And it just, again, it's a little more interesting and oh guess what, what's next to them? So one of our guys on one of these raised bases. And because we've got him and him, 
This one's also going to need a, a little bit of that. This one right here. You can see these are more standing on the ground. So we, we try and make this a little bit more undulating. Some are just right on the base. Some aren't. Some maybe are just standing on some kind of a rocky outcropping. Some aren't. So what I'm going to do is, so again, I take this. Now this has a little more, less has less give to it. A little more toughness to it. So let's see what happens. Yeah, see this? I'm going to cut it on here. Where'd that go? There it is. So I got my piece. It can go right in there. Real nice. And I'm just going to throw some glue down. And then I'm going to actually get some oxide paste again. The oxide paste, I think where you're really going to see it, is on the movement tray. Because remember, I was just saying how the glue sometimes spreads out. But well, the last thing you want on that movement tray is for that all of a sudden to have glue <laughs> gluing all of your figures down into the movement tray. You know, if that glue starts to sneak out and leak out, yeah, that's that's something we don't want. I fortunately didn't have to learn that lesson the hard way doing these. Now, there were a couple of times where I sort of pushed the envelope a little bit, and I just said, ah, I don't really want to put oxide paste there. I have glue on the brush. I'll just use that. And the glue came pretty darn close to spilling down where I didn't want it to go. So where's my piece that I wanted to stick on there? Here it is. Oh, speaking of glue, I'm going to grab me some glue again here. Yeah, a doubt a super glue would do the same thing, but I actually have my super glue in the other room, so we're going to do this a different way. So we again throw our piece right there. I'm even going to let that hang over the edge, see a little bit. What am I looking for? Another piece to throw on here, right there. And then, do I do a piece of wood here? I'll just throw a piece of wood over there. Some rocks. Like so. Now when it comes time to the painting, who knows, maybe an awful lot of this just gets covered with snow, ice, whatever. But at least it's there. So now we got, again, that little bit of overhang. Sorry. The camera is just not quite where I thought it was. Yeah, that'll be better. No, that's going to end up on camera. So this one, we're going to go a little bit flatter on it. Again, we don't want everything on this side to all be like standing up on one end. So we're going to go back to some glue here so it's a little bit flatter. Back to our glue. And let's get this out here. It doesn't take a bunch. Now, I've got this piece here. It's, again, relatively flat. I'm just going to throw that right there and then just finish it off with some rocks. A rock there. Try and get some smaller ones around it. Here's another smaller rock. Back to a bigger rock. I'm going to take some medium gravel here. Sprinkle that out. And you can see I have focus around where the bigger rock is. And now I'm going to grab some of my loose leaf tea. I'm just kind of crinkling this up. I don't know if you can hear it. Maybe you can. But I'm just sort of crushing that a little bit in advance. And so we're going to sprinkle that on there. Sprinkle it out. Maybe a little bit of sand here. So again, another eight. And well, guess what? We're on our last figure. This is the last one. 
And from there, after this one, we'll move on and tackle the movement tray. Now this uh, this unit, the movement tray is a little bit more involved because I'm trying to get things like the tree branches and like more of the rocky basing more more texture on it than the I almost said Easterlings than the Lannisters and the Starks because I want their landscape to be a little more gentle. That's a way to put it. So I'm gonna take this little piece of wood here, gonna throw that down on the base, a rock, some more rocks, another rock, another rock, tea leaves where those here we go. Just gonna again crinkle these up. You can even take what is that mortar and pesto thing and crush those yourself. They're reasonably crushed, but sometimes they need to be a little bit finer. So here we are. There's a last base. Stick him in here. Now I'll grab the unit for you, and we will. back out of this and get you focused so there's your movement tray so again we've got some guys that are up on their more of a pedestal type base we have a few tree branches sticking out here so in our next segment what we're going to we're going to do is build around all this stuff we're going to get a little collection of our some larger tree branches like that. That's really neat. Look at that old log there. So that's something maybe that goes back here you know, towards the back of the unit. Because what we want to build up is almost something like our giant here. And this is another tutorial that I did and I've got a new giant tutorial that I'm working on. So again, see that same old branch and see the icicles coming off of that this is what I want to do for all of my northern stuff if you want to call it that so stay tuned I'll be right back with getting the basing materials on our movement tray It's time to tackle the movement tray. We're going to work around all the figures that have their basing material. So we've got our oxide paste out here. I've got glue that's ready. And we've got plenty of bits of trees, bits of bark, bits of branches. I think the branches, I'm going to make those go towards the back. So we'll throw that back there, at least the larger stuff. Some of the smaller stuff, maybe that's going to go up front. And I might even save a few of these smaller pieces. But you see I've got these chunks right here. So here. This chunk, what I'll sometimes do is I'll just lay them out like this and say, eh, you know what, I'm going to put that maybe over here. Yeah, you can see that sort of goes with that piece there, right? Yeah, I'll throw that over there. So then I'm just going to break up some of these pieces like so. Now normally, uh, I just I had a little leftover. Ah, good, that's where you can see it. A little leftover oxide paste. So here, what we're going to do is get this out here. Notice I've got to leave a little clearance for that but look at the amount of texture that that leaves again you know I could be using the, the super glue too and let's see which way we want this to go that's perfect you see what that does it carries that same texture of the rock but matches the line of our movement tray so that's also another fun thing you can do. I do also recommend not getting too out, out in front of your 
basing with the oxide paste and that is put out a little bit in an area work with it where it is it doesn't dry instantly it's not like super glue or anything it basically probably cures about the same rate as say the wood glue whatever but you definitely don't want to get too far out in front so see here we're just going to go like that now the interesting thing about the oxide paste is that it has its own texture you don't necessarily have to like say if you use the glue you'd have to probably put down at least some gravel or sand now remember I wanted some glue here I'm just gonna take that throw down a dot of glue and then I'm gonna throw this down here so again we're trying to keep in line with what we've got all around the oops there we go all around that area now, and I'm gonna actually work all the way to this side too since I've got the the glue and the oxide paste out here move that back so it's more on screen now this area I think you can imagine is going to get more of just your sand, rocks, tea leaves, and last but not least, I'm going to give it some kind of a tree branch here because what do we got on his base? We have a little bit of a little piece of tree branch on there, so it sure makes sense to have. I'm going to break up some of this, at least a touch of some tree branches there. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't hang out too far so that the movement trays can actually come in contact. I'm going to get some little more glue over here. And my tea leaves here. Now let's start off with a couple of rocks. I'm just going to get a couple of rocks out here of different sizes. There's a small one. Get the tweezers. Drop a larger one in there. So I might as well continue using the tweezers. They've worked really well. And here's my tea leaves again. So this is that thing I was referring to is I'm just crushing that stuff to make it a little bit smaller. Just crushing that up. And sometimes it'll stick in your hand almost like a sliver if you crush too hard. But see that nice little pile of texture on our glue, a little bit on our oxide paste, and just sprinkle a little bit of sand over the top. Right? And spin this around a touch. Now I have to work on my next level here, which means I've got to take these figures out of the tray need to put them somewhere. Of course, you'll probably have way more space than I will. So you could probably have a whole nother movement tray where you can deposit these. But I'm just going to stick them right here for now. Just get them out of the way. And this way I know where they're supposed to go. Now we're going to advance to the next row. And that means going back to our oxide paste and I think you can pretty well see what the idea is see how I just kinda let that there's texture on the movement tray already so I don't really have to this doesn't have to go right up to the edge it doesn't have to go right up to the edge that's how I did all my other ones and they're they don't really have anywhere near as much snow as this one does. So see here I'm going to make that a little lower just like we did before 
and then guess what I'm gonna grab some just my wood glue here I'm gonna work on the far far end of this a few drops of but you notice I just less rested on top of the oxide paste I think it's the sandy paste you can almost mix that with the glue and it works okay the oxide paste it just turns to string don't know why no clue but that's what happens so now let's say if I want to put this this branch in here gotta figure out where that can go and I'm gonna need some more oxide paste to support it sometimes things may just not fit where you want them to go but I think I get that to go right in there oh look uh, you know what it's gonna go somewhere else it's gonna go over here like that much better so see I get stuff can still come in contact with this because it's not overhanging the edge of the tray now we've got a situation here where we're gonna want some kind of pieces of this here right now let's chop up some more larger chunks perhaps for in here now that piece may not fit as is so I'm gonna cut it down slightly and then yeah drop that in there so it's not interfering with our any of our guys right just got some rocks here I only got them I'll throw them on there I'm gonna throw a little chunk of this right here maybe drop a few more smaller rocks around it See, I, I love doing the basing as much as that but I kind of enjoy the movement trays I know for most people probably basing the movement trays is not really a, a thrill a minute experience but for me it's just a lot of fun so see, I've got myself a little triangle type piece here oh guess what boom right there not a bad spot for it uh, oh why not let's go crazy here let's just go wild and what I'm gonna do is throw some oxide paste on it sorry this is off screen I'm gonna throw a little glue on it I'm gonna try and drop that right in there just gonna go nuts So push that in whoops just trying to get a little more glue under there to support that so see now we've got again it just it's starting to look like its own little diorama and guess what I've got to do the same thing that I did with the row in front of them so either somebody's rolled a horrible morale test or they've been hit by flayed men but that row goes away Oh, speaking of flayed men, I think I showed you the basing I did on them. That's going to be a fun set of tutorials. Really looking forward to that. Not sure if I'll stick exactly, precisely to the so-called official color scheme. I may add some of my own little elements to it. Who knows? But that's another one I'm looking forward to. I've got all of the neutrals, so expect tutorials on them no doubt about it here I'm gonna spread some of this out now this is a little different approach than how I did the Lannisters so those of you that have seen oh, I think that's series 4 yeah that's series 4 it was almost like I was working uh, by laying down bricks I kinda started in a corner and worked my way radiated out from that one corner here I'm going row by row it's because I've got all this forest stuff I've got some additional textures that I just didn't have on the Lannister bases so there we go good enough 
Let's get ourselves a nice flat chunk of there's a little nice piece to throw here. So we've got this boy. Is, is that going to fit in there? Oh, look at that. It just does. Yeah, I'm going to snap off a little bit of that. Just does fit in there. So I can still get my bases in. But now, yeah, it covers that real nice. And I'm even going to go... Yeah, we're just we're going completely insane here. We are going to get out some glue. And I've got a piece of wood. Oh, guess what? It matches the piece of wood that's sitting over there. What are we going to do? We're going to throw it on top of that. We're going double texture. We're throwing texture on top of texture. Oh, my goodness. Somebody call the constabulary because we have just gone crazy. Throw a little rock pile in here. See, I got a nice big old boulder in there and smaller stuff around it here. Let's drop a little bit there. Some more here. And sometimes you kind of give them a little place to rest. You know, we're not going to do a whole bunch of texture over here. So I got a rock in the way. Going to go back to my tea leaves because I don't have any figures in the way. And I can drop some of this in here. I'm going to crush up some more, make it small. And again, on this end where it's got less of the raised texture of the tree bark, I'm just going to put a little sand over the top. Ironically enough, when you add the sands, uh, sand, sands, the sand and the gravel pieces, it, it almost, I don't want to say it acts like concrete, but it does actually help adhere things together a little bit. Now this last row, we don't actually have to remove. Don't have to take it away. We can just spin it around like this. Now this is where things might get a little more interesting. Right? So... We have some choices to make. We've got really neat stuff like this. We could put a now we wouldn't have it this tall, but you could potentially have a tree on the back of this because hey, they're going through the forests, right? And it's not like they have to fit in a building or whatever. But I think I'm gonna save this for my free folk because that's just nifty. So you'll probably be seeing that again. But you remember this item. What I really like is this right here there's a little bit of a bend in it is that gonna fit sometimes things may just not fit the way you want so I've got my players here what I'm gonna do is snap it right there and now it fits so it goes right in between the movement trays it's not overhanging anywhere. And, oh, I've got an extra piece that I could even throw here. I could throw them here, wherever. And I could even take that piece and throw it out here if I wanted. We've got this little kind of a Y type shape. I'm not going to work with that because what I want to do. And let's see if we can flatten out this piece enough. All right, that'll fit somewhere uh, like that. No, nope, see, I want to match the direction that that my pattern on here. So I'm gonna do is that almost works. What do I have to do to make that work? I have to break off some of that. Okay. So what that does, see it sort of continues his rock, but what I also want to do is have somewhere to be able to drill a hole for this tree. Okay. Now, I want to get another piece of tree bark in here. 
maybe a smaller lower piece here and now what do we want to do as we feather this out I'm gonna go with that so that'll oops no nah, yeah yeah because what we're gonna do is put more oxide paste over here actually I made a lot of oxide paste along this whole thing but if I want to glue a little tree in there I've got to figure out okay which of these is gonna work well for that I've got a few of these again some of these dried there, like that so let's get this off of here So if I've got a couple of these together, see how it looks more like some kind of a shrub type there. And I've learned uh, if I want to do this live, I almost have to sort of pre-drill this in advance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking my pin here. I can even say sharpen up my pin a bit. And no, I'm not sharpening it like a pencil. I'm just getting all the paint off of it. And I'm just sticking this down in here. See it comes through. Could have used the drill bit, but I also want this to be a little bigger because I'm trying to fit two pieces in there. So that's going to sit there. So let's get all this stuff cleared away so we know where our pieces are going to go. And let's get all of our oxide paste where it needs to be. So again, I'm just, this is not, you don't have to then turn around and do this exact same thing. See where I'm covering up the little, uh, uh, your your markers here on the corners. Let's say you don't want to do that. Just, just leave them open. You do not have to copy this exactly. To me, I've got plenty of laser pointers that do the exact same thing. And will actually, you know, this way I don't have to deal with the ruler or anything like that. I just shine the laser pointer You'll see that in the battle reports, for sure, because if you've seen any of my bolt action battle reports, you know I really rely even more than the straight up laser pointer for line of sight. The one I really rely on is that one that goes over the top and just draws a line down into, right down onto the table, because that's very important for marking where line of sight is around trees around forests. So let's just get ourselves uh, see if I can't steal a little more wood glue here. So again this is the it's tight bond. I think it's the green label one that dries a little bit faster maybe. There's a green label, a blue label, and a red. And I think this is this one has, it's like the strongest glue. I think you saw it as, you know, superior hole, whatever. The green one, I think, is the one that dries faster. And I think the blue label might be just your, as I keep hearing British folks say, bog standard. Huh, I've been waiting a long time to use that term. All right, here we go. Poof, he goes there. That goes there. Oh, look, we've even got glue shooting up through the little thing there. This piece goes here. This piece here. And our log goes there. Now remember we've got our tree pieces here. Just gonna get some glue on these. I'm gonna try and make that so you can see it see if there's enough room for both of those to stick down in there. Oh, lo and behold, there is. At least it seems that way. Yep. So we've got both branches sitting in there. And when I look at it from the back, now it looks like a little scene. You certainly don't want that tree sitting out front because, well, hey, <laughs> it would be, that would be kind of be in their way. 
but A kind of makes sense here in the back. Now, what if we were to take some of these more broken up pieces here, do something similar to what we did everywhere else, and the, and the thing is, it doesn't stick out too far. So something can charge this in the back. It's not going to have any problem. It's all good. And see if I can't get one more of these underneath that log. Like that. Again, you can use super glue if you want. And now... We're going to drop in some of our rocks here, all the while making sure that we haven't pushed any of that glue down onto a base so that the base ends up sticking in there. You'll notice that you might have to kind of work a miniature out of the, you know, one of the little holes or whatever. All right, let's. Get you over here. Tea leaves. Tea leaves. In you go. Tea leaves. Especially where there's trees. Tea leaves. Tea leaves. And what I might even do is you can water this down a touch if you want. But this will, A, give this tree a little extra hold. But guess what you can do? Eh, I guess I'll use my tweezers. What the heck? I got them. So I can throw a little rock here. Give that a little extra support. You would be amazed at how rugged those, those darn little trees can be. Again, it's just dried foliage from Michael's, I think, from years ago. Oh, and by the way, some of these these tree things like that that I just put on there, I think we got that 15 years ago. So you can see they don't just corrode and die, whatever you want to call it. That's another thing. I hear people, oh, these horror stories, if you use leaves and this and that and the other, you got to do this to them and treat them and do this and that and the other. And like I say, I've been doing this for many years. And I have not experienced any issues whatsoever. None of the horrible things and, and dire circumstances that people talk about, none of those have ever happened, so I don't worry about it. And neither should you. Now, what I am going to do eventually, I think it's going to have to be a separate tutorial or something. It might just be a short one. Oh my gosh, the, these are all together. Now, you got to get these things. What do you do with these for gameplay and for transport especially. So I think you can see these magnets here. These are 10 by 2 millimeter. And I think I did this actually at the end maybe of the Easterling basing video. So essentially what happens is one of these goes in the underside of the base here. Another one goes underneath the tray and it gives it just enough hold to keep that thing in place but not so much hold that when you go to pull these off, you rip the miniature off the base or the whole tray goes flying with you. I mean, I've seen it, believe me, I've seen it in the old Warhammer Fantasy days where somebody picks up a miniature and the whole tray comes with it until it reaches about a foot off the table and then all the figures fall off. So that's, we don't want that. And this seems to have the good balance. Was there a hundred of these in here? And I think it was $11 on Amazon. Perfect size. It just, it's, it would take me too long this video would be three hours long if I tried doing this. So I figured a separate magnetizing video, maybe do the calf and these guys. So that might make an hour and a half long just to try and get these guys on here for magnetizing your trays. So I hope this was fun. All right here, let's see if we can blow off some of that and maybe get some of our guys back in the tray here. Uh, if you want, you can use the little compressed air things, right, that you use for your computer to get the uh, junk out of the way, you know, your keyboard and stuff. So look at how those just drop in. They're so nice. Look at that. And these guys just going to go right in here. 
There's no problem. They all fit. Everybody goes in the tray nice and easy. Poof. There you go. Now, obviously I'm going to be painting the Night's Watch figures. Uh, not Night Watch. Well, they're Night's Watch, but it's going to be the, what, the Ranger Trackers. No, the Ranger Hunters, sorry. I've got two units of these. So now we have sort of an example for when I do the when I do these Sworn Bro Sword Brothers right here. Sworn Brothers. Sorry. It's been a long day. Look at all the nifty texture on texture. We got logs, stone, little trees, but all of it is within the dimensions of the tray. Everything fits. Nothing's overhanging. So you don't have to worry about tray to tray contact, any of those type things. And this tree is not it's a little bush, a little shrub back here. It's not so tall. And besides, you're supposed to grab the tray from the sides. So you should have no problem working with this without busting up your trees. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, and get ready for episode two. And that's where we're going to take on that color test figure. And I think that is here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to paint another one of these. And after we paint another one of these, the next, I believe, the next three episodes, we'll be painting the rest of the unit. So if you want to, you can like, and you can subscribe, share. There's also plenty of other, I think I've got almost 100 videos now on the YouTube channel. So there's a lot of stuff. And for everybody that's a patron, I just want to say thanks. It makes all of this possible because it takes a considerable amount of time to film these, prep for these, edit these, render them. So I'll catch you again on Episode 2 of Series 6, Painting a Color Test Figure.